If you ever want to expand the borders of any image, one way to do so is without painting. In this video, we'll be going over on how to use Stable Diffusion to outpaint any image. So to get started, I went ahead and generated an image with the Stable Diffusion XL base model. Now this method will work for any model out there. So I have my image and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this Send to Image to Image tab. Once we are in the Image to Image tab, we can go ahead and scroll down all the way to the bottom to the script section. Here you can see Outpainting MK and Poor Man's Outpainting. Both of them are very similar. Uh, Outpainting MK offers a few more tweaks if you want to make fine-tuned adjustments to your outpainted image. In this example, we're just gonna be using the Poor Man's Outpainting. And as you can see, there are some of the parameters here, and I'm gonna leave all of these the same except for the outpainting direction. This script works best when working in a single direction. As for the other parameters, I'm gonna leave most of them the same. I'm gonna just boost this denoising strength just a little bit to get more creative results, and I'm gonna increase the sampling steps to 80. And then we're gonna go ahead and say crop and resize. So this way, the final image should have no blank pixels or any sort of areas that look out of sorts. So then all we will do is go ahead and click Generate. Okay, so that's now done generating. Let's take a look at the image. If you take a look here, we can see where the pixels were added based on the original. As we, if we look at like this red bush here, we can see that it was pretty much here over it's been expanded. And then we can kind of see there's a faint line where those additional pixels were added. Overall, it looks good. Uh, generally what we're looking for here is the idea that the image is being expanded. We aren't looking for pixel for pixel perfection. We'll actually go over that a little bit later on how we can alter this image to look absolutely beautiful once it's all out painted. But generally though, the composition here looks good and I'm happy with it. So what that means is I'm gonna go ahead and click this send to image to image tab and it will replace this image. Now all the parameters will pretty much remain the same. We still see our 80 steps here and our denoising of 0.8 that we switched up to. However though, the width and the height have now increased and that's okay. We're gonna leave that the same and I still wanna go ahead and go in the leftward direction. Okay, so now that that has added another 128 pixels to the left, we can see that there's some contrasting going on here between the composition. Uh, we can see some leaves coming in and it kind of clashes with what was there previous and we're starting to see some sort of layering up here. Again though, this is okay. Uh, we're look, making sure that like completely foreign objects aren't being added to the sides here. We just want relative consistency compared to the overall composition. So to save some time here, I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward to a fully outpainted image that has not been retouched at all yet. Okay, so now that we've extended the image in both the left and right direction, let's take a look at it. We can see overall it has a nice panoramic shape and there is these distinct bands uh, that are going up and down on both the left and right sides. And again, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and clean it up now. So to clean it up, we have two options we can either send it to the image to image tab or inpaint it. First, we're just gonna do the image to image. Now, before we do anything, we wanna go ahead and turn off the poor man's outpainting script. So I'm gonna just go ahead and go down here and click none. And then I'm gonna leave the denoising at 0.8 and the steps at 80. And that's all you have to do. We're just gonna go ahead and generate the image and see what we have. Now, it's important to note that with this process, the subject might change a little bit and that's okay. We still have our original seed value in there from whenever we did the text to image process. But during this image to image process, little things about the subject might change, whether it's their expression, the type of clothes that they're wearing or whatever it might be, because it's basically redoing the entire image from scratch right now, but it's still retaining the overall subject uh, and how everything is laid out. Now. This will basically generate a brand new image that might have completely different features because our denoising strength was set so high at 0.8. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's our brand new image. As you can see, 
everything looks beautiful now. There's none of that banding that's going up and down on the sides. However, though, the subject does look a little bit different as far as with the clothing and facial expression, which is okay and was expected, but it's just notable in case if that's not what you want in your project or you're comfortable with little changes like that. Now, if you want more of the subject to carry over to this through this process, we well, can just set the denoising strength down to say like 0.25. Now, there is a word of caution here is if you set the denoising strength to zero, it just copies and pastes the original image to image over to the generated image. And at one, it would be a completely new image. So we're basically telling Stable Diffusion how much it should be creative. A higher value will allow it to be more creative and a lower value will be less creative. So with a less creative value, we should expect the image to be fairly the same, but with some adjustments. Let's see what we get here. Okay, so if we look at the image at denoising of 0.25, we still see some resemblance of these bands in the image. And that's to be expected. We didn't tell the model to be too creative and our subject there still remains relatively intact, but it's still not looking good enough here. So we're gonna go ahead and boost up this denoising strength to like 0.6. We want it to be more creative than instead of more original. So let's go ahead and generate this image. Okay, so here's at 0.6. So this looks really good, at least just from the brief overview here. As you can see, the subject relatively remains intact. There are still some subtle changes like the length of her arm here as well as the, the clothing on how some of it is and even her facial expression. Um, but overall, the composition looks really nice. We can see there's no more vertical banding here on the left and right side of the image. And the subject, uh, yeah, overall still looks pretty good. Um, and just to give you an idea on how this looks, let's go ahead and compare this to the other images that we created. Okay, so here's all of our images and how they kind of went through the denoising process. So here's our original outpainted image. As you can see, we can see the vertical bands on both the left and right side are fairly distinct. At 0.25, we start to see them kind of disappear a little bit. And then at 0.60, they're completely gone. Uh, and the subject still relatively remains the same. Here, again, they are at uh, 0.25 and original. And then at 0.8, we can see quite a bit of changes. Uh, overall composition remains the same. Um, however, though, the subject has changed quite a bit. Again, we're going between the 0.6 and 0.8 denoising. And then, uh, but overall, it is uh, a good looking image. Okay, so that's with the image to image generation. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at in painting. So in painting is a great way to selectively edit a picture. We're just gonna go ahead and drag and drop our original outpainted image here. And once it's in here, we're gonna go ahead and select the brush tool and then drag this all the way up since we're painting a large area here. And basically I'm just gonna go ahead and in paint all the areas of which we expanded. And it's okay if it gets a little bit out of the selected area there. But basically, we're just going to be replacing all this area with a new image. Okay, so that's all in-painted. So now I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that some of these parameters are correct. So I'm going to actually increase the batch count to three uh, different images. And I'm going to set the denoising up to 0.6 since I was pretty happy with how it worked out there in the image to image section. And I'm going to keep the sampling method the same and then just make sure that we're doing just the only masked area. So we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and click generate. Okay, so the in-painting just finished up. So as you probably remember, the original image had quite a few vertical bands. Now, whenever we take a look at these images, uh, they look much nicer. We can see that there's really not too much of a resemblance of the vertical bands, maybe a little bit going on here and maybe a little bit here, but overall it's looking pretty good. And I'm not sure actually if I even in-painted that far there. Um, and I don't think I got that, so that's why it's still there. Um, 
But as we can see, here's another image from the batch. Again, these look much more cohesive um, versus what was there previous in the original image. And again, here too. So we kind of have a few different variations that we could go with depending on whatever it is that we want to kind of get out of this outpainted image. So that's with inpainting. It's a little bit better if you want certain areas of the image to remain untouched, um, such as like the subject matter, which could be very important depending on what it is that you wanted to originally outpaint and then are subsequently inpainting. Um, so it's a little bit of a different way to approach the same problem. Of course, um, you know, it all depends on what your use case is. So that's with outpainting an image, and that's all the steps that you need. Now, inevitably, you're probably going to run into one of the following problems, a blurry edge. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our text to image tab and send this back over to image to image. I'm going to just clear this out. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the poor man's outpainting again. And I'm going to leave everything just as it is. Um, but this time, I'm going to set the denoising strength to like 0.2. And I'm going to leave the sampling steps at 20. Uh, and then the batch is at 1. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just generate this image. And let's see what happens. So this right here, you can see developed this nasty looking blurred band on the side. And it's a problem that a lot of people face whenever out painting. And the reason for that is twofold typically. Is one is uh, depending if you selected many different directions, which we did not. So we know that that's not the issue. But if you try to expand the image in multiple directions, it can always be a problem there. But our denoising strength is really too low. This should be uh, north of 60, probably in like the 0.8 uh, range here. And then the sampling steps is the other culprit. But if we want to save some processing power and just to see if that could have been the issue, we can go ahead and go with a 0.8 denoising strength and see if that resolves the blurriness. Okay, so at a sampling step of 20 and a denoising of 0.8, that was the problem, is that the noising strength limits how creative the model will be. So you want it to be more creative when outpainting. Um, you don't want it to uh, rely so much on this image because you know, you're trying to extend the image. So you could set up the sampling steps at a much higher number and get better with results with it. Again, it's kind of a little bit of tug and pull whenever it comes to working with stable diffusion models. Now the other problem that often people will try to do is go and try to get everything all at once and expand it um, because they want the image to really zoom out. And that usually will be a recipe for disaster. So let's go ahead and just do that. We'll leave the sampling steps. We'll bring it back down to 20 and see what happens. We're still going to leave this denoising at 0.8 and see what type of image that we get. Sometimes it can be really bad. Sometimes it can be not that bad. Uh, it really depends on how the diffusion models are kind of handling all these extra pixels at once. So here's the generated image, and this actually looks really good. Um, as you can see, it, it actually did a really good job of expanding the image in different ways. And this is kind of leads to the unpredictability of stable diffusion models. You never know if it's going to consistently give you good outputs or consistently give you unexpectedly bad outputs. Uh, but just as a reference, I did also a similar image to this before the video. And this is the output that I had when expanding in many different directions. As you can see, it kind of framed the image and I was kind of expecting something similar to this in the live demo. Um, but it is kind of one of those things where, you know, you're not sure what you're going to get. And if something goes bad in one area, so for example, if it just drew a really bad right border, uh, then it could carry over to all other sides of the image kind of you know, leading to poor results. So again, it comes with a lot of testing, but generally speaking, I think it's a little bit better to always just go in one direction at a time instead of trying to expand the image outwards, or else you probably will get some sort of those borders uh, in your images. So that's it whenever it comes to outpainting with stable diffusion. I hope that this video was helpful in kind of giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to really you know, expand upon those images that you've already created with stable diffusion models. Uh, if you do have any questions, please drop a line in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to help out. 
Uh, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up. That's always appreciated. And last but not least, consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching and take care.